Hello, and welcome to this discussion of Practicum 1. Practicum 1, first and foremost, looked at variable types. There's two main variable types, the categorical and the numeric. The type of variable is determined by how much information is contained in that variable. Categorical variables do not have as much information in them as do numeric variables. Numeric variables have numbers associated with them, and we can do a lot of things with those numbers. Categorical variables, at most, you've got counts, frequencies. And that's why the mode is all that works for categorical variables, and the mean and the median work for numeric variables in terms of measure of center. Now, the correct measure of center for those numeric variables depends upon how skewed the data are. So I was looking to see if you could detect the type of variable, the amount of information included in that type of variable, and whether or not you could determine the correct measure of center and of spread. I also looked at whether you could do correlations and a couple plots, because it's always good to visualize your data. So let's go into R and see how to do all of this using Practicum R. Practicum 1 test four objectives. Importing data into R, calculating the statistics in R, creating graphics in R, and calculating probabilities, specifically Bayes' law. In order to calculate statistics and to create graphics, you have to understand that different types of variables contain different information, which means different types of statistics and graphics are applicable to each. For instance, you cannot do a histogram with categorical data, and you can't do a bar plot with numeric data. Bar plots are for categorical data, histograms and box plots are for numeric data. The mode is for categorical data, means and medians are for numeric data. Now, which do you use, a mean or a median? Depends on if the data are skewed. If the data are skewed, according to the Hildebrand rule, you should use the median. Otherwise, use the mean. So let's begin. The data file is the Big 12 Football 2015. There's a URL for it. Let's go ahead and start R. I'm going to set, I've already set the working directory. So I'm going to start a new script. I'm going to set the windows. And the first thing I need to do, or technically one of the first things I need to do, is load the data. So I'm going to call the data set DT. Feel free to call it something like FB for football. And the function to read in data from a CSV file is read.csv. Now once I read in the data, I want to make sure that I've actually read it in correctly. So I'm going to perform a summary on the data set. I'm going to run those two lines all together. On my keyboard, it's going to be Control R because I'm using a Windows machine. Were this a Mac, that would be con uh, Command Enter. Looks like I uh, looks like the data are imported correctly. So now I'm going to attach the data set just so I don't have to worry about the dollar sign notation. And let's go ahead and begin. The first thing I need to do according to Practicum 1A is look at the variable conference. It indicates whether the game was against a Big 12 team or a non-conference team. By its very description, it's going to be categorical and nominal. How do, can I tell that from R? Conference, here's the variable, has two levels, Big 12 and out. That tells me it's categorical and nominal. 58 of the games were Big 12 games. 30 of the games were out of the Big 12. So just by looking at this, I know that the Big 12 is the mode, because it is the one that happens most frequently. I could, of course, uh, determine this by using the table function. This will just give me a tabulation of the conference variable. 58 is the frequency for the Big 12 level. 30 is the frequency for the out level. Since 58 is greater than 30, Big 12 is the mode. I could also use the modal function. And hit Control R, and I get an error. I cannot find the function modal. That's because modal is not a function that comes with the base R. You have to load it. 
So I'm going to go back up to the top, load it by using the source command. Source is used to import functions. Read.csv is used to import data. Don't confuse the two. It may help you to recall that read.csv reads in files that end in CSV. Source will usually read in files that end in R. I'm going to hit Control R, and it's going to load. And there it is. All of these functions have now been loaded into R. I'm going to need to do that every time that I start up R if I want to use one of these functions. So now I'll go back to the modal. Control R tells me the modal conference is Big 12. Now I need to name the correct measure of location because this is a categorical variable. The correct measure of location is the mode. Its value is Big 12. If it is appropriate to check for skew, let's do it. It's not appropriate to check for skew. Skew is only a measure uh, is only used for numeric variables. Conference is not a numeric variable. Measure variability does not exist because this is a categorical variable. It will only exist for numeric variables. Can pr uh, create one appropriate graphic of the variable. Okay, we've got a couple options. Option one is the pie chart. Function is pi. Don't forget to include table. Out is a smaller piece than big. Another option is bar chart. But the function itself is bar plot. That's what a bar plot looks like. Very basic graphic. Again, big 12 height is higher than out, therefore Big 12 is going to be the modal category. I'm going to keep that up because I'll need it next. Assuming the data set is a random sample of NCAA football games, does it appear that one quarter of the games are non-conference games? If this is a random sample, then what we calculate off the data is also going to be random. So even though the number of out or the number of out games is 30 and the number of Big 12 games is 58, which is about a third are out, this is a random sample. So it's not going to be exactly a third. It could be 40%. It could be 20%. I'm looking for some discussion of that randomness based on the fact that this is a random sample. And that's the end of problem one. We were examining a categorical variable, trying to determine if you could find the correct measure of center, if you could specify that there was no measure of spread for it, and then give me a nice graphic, and then interpret the randomness. Problem two compares two numeric variables, points for, which is the number of points scored by the team in that game, and yards for, which is the total number of yards made by the team in that game. These are two numeric variables, and we're trying to look at the relationship between them. Since we're looking at the relationship, this, the statistic we're going to calculate is the correlation. And the graphic we're going to create is going to be the scatter plot. So the variables are points for and yards for. The first thing we need to do is calculate the correlation. The function is core.test. Takes the two variables, control R, the correlation is 0.8381269. Since I specified four decimal places, it's 0.8381. But wait, you say, what if I had these in the opposite order? What if yards four came before points four? Well, let's find out. I switch the order, control R, get the same values because it's looking at just the relationship between these two variables. doesn't matter the order, we're just looking at the relationship. Now contrast that to the scatter plot that you're going to be drawing next. In a scatter plot, it takes two variables to fill two slots. The first slot belongs to the x variable, or the independent variable. The second belongs to the y variable, or the dependent variable. 
have to determine which of the two variables is the dependent variable, which causes the other. And if you think about it, if you score points, you don't then get yards. So the point scoring does not cause the yards to increase. It's the yards increasing that will tend to increase the number of points. So yards causes a change in points. So yards will be the independent variable. Points will be dependent. And it will be dependent on yards. And there's our basic scatter plot. Notice that it does appear as though there's a very strong correlation between those two variables, which we already know. It was 0 0.8381. It's a very strong correlation. It's a positive correlation. As the number of yards increases, so too does the number of points in general, on average, as a trend. Now the interpretation question Still assuming that this data set is a random sample of the games, does it appear that there's a strong relationship between the number of yards attained and the points scored by the, ta by the team? The answer is yes. Here's the graphic for that. As the number of yards increases, this trend upwards for the number of points scored is very strong. Not looking at the slope, I'm looking at the narrowness of this variation. Another way of looking at this, the correlation is extremely high and positive. So as the yards increase, the number of points scored tends to increase as well. And that was question number two. And now for part B, the individual part. Same data set, which is going to be the rule for these practicums. Question three, also we're supposed to be comparing points for and points against. These are both numeric variables. We're looking at the relationship, therefore the, me the statistic we're going to use will be the correlation, and the graphic we're going to use is going to be the scatter plot. Let's begin. Correlation between the number of points scored by the team and the number of points scored against the team is negative. 0.2464. It's rather low. Now let's do, do a uh, scatter plot. Oh, but wait, we have to determine which is the independent variable and which is the dependent variable. And what I was looking for in this part in this part where I asked you to defend your choice was I was trying to see if you could reason through this. And I guarantee that half of you reasoned that the points for was going to be the dependent variable, and half of you reasoned that the points against was the dependent variable. The correct answer is, I really have no idea which is dependent and which is independent. I was looking for your reasoning. There's our graphic. Hmm looks like a blob. Mm, slight downward, but it still looks like a blob. Slight downward because the correlation is negative, looking like a blob because the correlation is only 0 0.2464. It's a low to moderate correlation. Now in the future, we're going to pay attention to this value up here called the p-value, but that's for after the midterm. Do the data support my friend's contention that there's a relationship? Want to see the argument there. You don't know about the p-value yet, but I want you to use the correlation and tell me what you think about that correlation of negative 0.2464. Note that my friend said there's a strong relationship. We've just shown that it, there is not a strong relationship. It's low to moderate at all, at, at best. And that was three. And now for the final question. Question number four from part B, the individual part. Looking at the variable pass attempts, it's the number of passes attempted by the quarterback in the game. Since it's the number of, we know it's a numeric variable. It's going to be a ratio level variable because a value of zero indicates a lack of passing attempts. 
So it's going to be quantitative, numeric. It's going to be ratio. Now, the correct measure of location depends upon the skew. Don't forget to check for skew. So let's check for skew on that variable. The function to check for skew is Hilde brand rule. And it takes the value, uh, takes the variable name, pass attempts. According to the Hildebrand rule, there is no skew. Therefore, we can use the mean for the measure of center and the standard deviation for the measure of spread. The mean is 34.8864. Standard deviation is 10.7377. Create one appropriate graphic. Because this is a numeric graphic, we can do a box plot. Or, notice it's nice and symmetric ish. Or we could do a histogram. Looks kind of symmetric ish. It doesn't look severely skewed to me. And Hildebrand, Hildebrand rule agrees with that. There's no significant skew. Either of those plots would be appropriate. There's also the function histogram. If you like that look, that's the de default. There's a lot of other possibilities as well. But the box plot and the histogram are the two quintessential graphics that are used for numeric variables. Now, assuming the data set is a random sample of NCAA, again, I'm focusing on the randomness. Is the average number of passing attempts in a typical game 35? Well, let's look. The mean was 34.8863. That's not equal to 35. However, a very large variation in that, a very large level of uncertainty, and 34.8864 is pretty close to 35, so Combining the it's close to 35 with the there's a large level of uncertainty and the fact that this is a random sample from all the games played, I would I would be re I would be willing to say that 35 is the average number of pass attempts. I probably would not be willing to say that 78 is the average number of pass attempts or 3 is the average number of pass attempts. I'd say it's probably somewhere between 30 and 40. 35 makes sense to me. Again, emphasizing that this is a random sample, and because it's a random sample, we know that all of these statistics are also random variables. And now we know what a random variable is. So that statement actually makes sense. And so that's it for practicum number one. Notice I've got comments. I've got good comments for practicum one, problem A1. I uh, stopped doing really good comments later on. If I really wanted to, I could do correlations and scatter plot. And same for practicum 1, problem B3, and similar for B4. Um, check skewness sample statistics graphic at the top I call this a script for practicum one labeled the first part the preamble and I'm ready to save this and make sure you do save this because you will want to come back to it make sure you do comment because you want this to make sense to the future you when you come back to it so in this practicum, we talked about a few things. We focused on the fact that different amounts of information are contained in different types of variables, categorical variables versus numeric variables. In categorical variables, because it's low level of information, there's very little that you can do with them. You can get a measure of center called the mode, but there's no real measure of variation. You could create pie charts and bar plots because that makes sense for categorical variable. You can't do box plots, and histograms. Whereas numeric variables is just the opposite. You can do means and standard deviations if the data are not severely skewed. 
If they are, then you'll have to do a median and an interquartile range. And for graphic, box plot and histogram for numeric data. And the last thing we talked about was correlation. If the variables are numeric and you care about the relationship between the variables, not the variables themselves, but the relationship between those variables, then you do, you do a correlation and look at a scatter plot to illustrate that relationship. Thank you very much. Take care.